Ladies and gentlemen, live from the famous Acme Comedy Hollywood, it's Hollywood Stands Up, an evening with Stu Smith. Starring Stu Smith, Robin McDonald, Joshua Kirby, music by El Minoki, and your host, Darren Kaposi. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Darren Kaposi. Yeah! <laughs> What's up, everybody? Yeah, what a crowd. Welcome to Hollywood Stands Up, an evening with who? Stu Smith. You guys are great. How are we doing? Give it up for my boys, LMNRP. <laughs> guys, rocking it, rocking it. I'm your host, Darren Capozzi, and I'm from the East Coast. Any from the East Coast here? Okay, I was, uh, are you guys, let me ask you guys a question. Uh, guys, this is intelligence, it's live. I can hear and see when you're talking. What part of the East Coast are you guys from? Well, from the Canadian coast, Toronto. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. Keep it going for Toronto, everybody. <laughs> Boston. <laughs> East Side. I'm, uh, I'm from New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey. And I was, uh, I was hanging out with one of my friends today because it was raining and she's from California. Are you guys sick and tired of the people that are born and raised in California who think it's freezing after it's raining and it's below 65 degrees? <laughs> you guys, Canada, you know what it's like. People from the East Coast. Do you know how cold it gets? This time of year in the East Coast, this is how cold it gets. I'm sure, it's a, I'm sure it's the same in Canada. You'll drop your house keys in the snow and be like, eh, fuck it, I'll get a new house. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I, uh, I recently, I was back. I went back from my 2010-year high school reunion. It was 20. <laughs> and uh, I went, yeah, take time, put that one. I, uh, I went to high school with, uh, you guys watched the Jersey Shore? Well, I went to high school with all those retards. <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, but I have been here for so long, and I haven't hung out with those guys, but at my reunion, I was hanging out with them. And this one thing about Italians from New Jersey, they can't remember any specific important date in their life unless their sports team did something that year. So I was hanging out with this one big guido, and uh, his wife, Vanessa, was beautiful. And I was like, yo, Vinny, man, uh, how'd you meet your wife, Vanessa? And he's like, Shit, let's see. Uh, how did I meet Vanessa? Uh, uh, it was uh, Game 7, 2001. Yankees versus Arizona. Uh, Mariano was having the hardest time closing. Next thing I know, it's a bloop single over his head. Bada bing, bada bang. Arizona wins the championship. I'm at a strip club. That's where I met Vanessa. <laughs> she was known as Champagne back then, but now we're splitting his. I, uh, a lot of my friends also had tattoos. You guys have tattoos? Anyone have tattoos? Yeah. yeah, I think tattoos are getting out of hand. I think people are confusing tattoos with journaling. <laughs> right? You should be simple in the 50s. You got like an anchor and a heart and you're out the door. My one friend at the reunion, he was like, he was all hammered. He was showing them off. He's like, What's this over here? No, it's not a picture of my family. It's a picture of the Golden Girls, season one through five. Uh, this right here, that's my third grade report card. I think it speaks for itself. Oh, this here is my grandmother. She died in the 80s. That's why it says, I ain't afraid of no ghost. Where'd he go? He's, oh, welcome back. Welcome back, dude. He's like, I'm bored with your set. <laughs> my, uh, my, uh, my mother was home. My mother loved that show, The Voice. Do you guys watch that show? Yeah. It's a good show, right? What I don't understand about that show is why some of the singers decide to show us the notes mid-song. Like this one singer, she was like, Y'all so beautiful in every single way. Words can bring me down. Whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, 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 whoa,
but I, I love takeout Chinese food. Every time I go home, I go right to my favorite Chinese food restaurant. But it's so weird. It doesn't matter what state you're in, Jersey, California, it's always the same. Every time you order takeout Chinese food, they are so nice to you when they take the order, but so mean to their own. I walked in, I was like, oh, hey man, can I get some chicken and broccoli and some uh, fried rice? And he's like, oh yeah, chicken, broccoli, fried rice, okay. Yeah, so good order, so good order. Oh, oh. I throw in some crispy noodle for you, okay. Okay, oh, I like your t-shirt. It's a thug life, how ironic. Okay, hold on. Hold on, let me get that for you. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, 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 Then you're like, oh my God, I forgot to order a Coke. He's gonna fucking kill him. <laughs> hmm. I'm, uh, I'm recently single. That is the answer I was looking for. I want one shake, went, oh, and my eyes went, three, two, three, six, three, two. But uh, I, I've been doing some online dating. Anyone do online dating? You're liars. What's the internet? Never even heard of that. <laughs> but I met this girl, and it was perfect on paper. We matched up like 75%. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, whatever the fuck that means. So we decided to have this meet and greet coffee date. She, I'm already at the, at the place. First thing out of her mouth when she sees me, she goes, oh my God, seriously? <laughs> seriously? You're so skinny. I mean, you're so much skinnier than your picture. You're like manorexic. <laughs> I, 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 I was like, well, you got no tits. What's that make you, boobalemic? <laughs> I zinged her, bro. I zinged her, dude. But she was hot, so I continued the date. Because I'm a shallow guy. <laughs> and really horny. Why do you keep going like this, dude? To your right, like, check out my check out my girl. <laughs> She's really hot, and I'm horny. You see him do that? Are you are you are you having a stroke? What's going on, dude? <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> this woman's looking at me like she sees dead people. What's going on, sweetheart? Show's here, not down here. Stay with me. <laughs> so stupid. What was I talking about? Oh, my date. Oh yeah, so we're 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 hanging out, we're talking, we just we're walking down the street, and we pass this McDonald's, and I'm like, do you want to go in there real quick? She's like, oh my god, seriously? Uh, don't uh, don't tell me you go in there. It's such the deal breaker on my list. I was like, in my head, I'm like, well, I think the deal breaker was when you called me manorexic. <laughs> but like I said, she's hot. I don't give a shit. And then I was like, no, I don't, I don't go in there. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, gross. Like, what's even on that menu? I was like, I don't know. It's a hamburger, cheeseburger, double cheeseburger, quarter pounder, double quarter pounder with cheese, Big Mac, big and tasty, big and tasty with cheese, filet of fish, McChicken, McRib, Premium Chicken Classic Sandwich, Grill the Crispy, Premium Chicken Club Sandwich, Grill the Crispy, Ranch Snack Wrap, Grill the Crispy, Honey Mustard Snack Wrap, Grill the Crispy, Southern Style, Crispy Chicken Sandwich, plain. Half meal hamburger, half meal cheeseburger, half meal four piece chicken McNuggets, Mighty Keys meal six piece, Mighty Keys meal double cheeseburger. I mean, there's French fries, small, medium, large, chicken McNuggets, four, six, 20 piece, chicken select, five, three piece, and new chicken mid bites. Yeah. <laughs> but I sometimes I get parched and like get a Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, High C, Dr. Pepper, Dasani, Water, OJ Coffee, and Ice Coffee. But if we get up early before 10, we can get English muffin, sausage muffin, sausage muffin, bacon, bacon, hotcakes, hotcakes, hot scotch, mixed griddle, McGriddle, scrambled eggs, hash brown. What? But if you have diabetes, you can get fruit and yogurt parfait, kitty cone, apple dip, chocolate chip, a thick shake, granola, triple thick shake, strawberry chicken, thick McFlurry, and McFlurry, cake, apple pie, McDonald's cookies, and this is what is on the menu. <laughs> oh. She, she looks at me and she goes, oh my God, seriously, you work there? <laughs> and I was like, nah. 
Burger King Whopper, double Whopper, triple Whopper. Um, oh, I recently just read that Jack Nicholson, he's dating this uh, 29-year-old model because she's got an old soul. Yeah. I think what Jack really meant was young vagina. I mean, dudes, who goes out to clubs like, yo, yo, Jimmy, um, check, out, check out the girl over there. Uh, uh, which one, the blonde? Nah, um, no, the other one. Uh, the brunette? No. The one with the old soul. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what I do when I go to clubs. It's really weird. <laughs> old soul, it's kind of gross, right? It's better than a young soul and an old vagina, though, right? <laughs> young soul and old vagina. Doesn't that kind of sound like a country song? <laughs> do you guys want to help me out? I think we can do it, huh? You guys want to think we can do this with the band? Yeah. <laughs> Are you clapping? She's got a young soul in an old vagina. Got a young soul in an old vagina. Figured it out when I got behind her. Put a board in my butt, I won't fall inside her. She's got a young soul in an old vagina. It's bigger than both Carolinas. Or a whole dug out for miners. He got a young soul in an old vagina. Oh, she's got a young soul in an old vagina. <laughs> you guys ready to start the show? We've never rehearsed. Never rehearsed. Never. You gotta see my head. I'm going. I don't know how to sing to music. <laughs> you guys ready to start? This? I was like, uh oh, I'm in panic, panic mode. Uh, keep it going for uh, uh, MLP, please, everybody, my my boys. <laughs> We're um, really great. We're really great. All right, you guys ready to start? Did we ready to have a good time? Yeah. I think so. I think so. All right, this first guy. You guys ready for this first guy? Yeah. His first guy, he uh, he produces a show. It's called Friends for Benefits. Produces a show, Friends, ben, Benefits for Friends, Benefits for, for Friends, Benefits for Friends. Friends for Benefits. He's a regular. He's a regular at the comedy store of the show, The C Word, and he's usually drunk. Everybody, put your hands together for the very funny Joshua he's Kirby. Josh, Josh, Josh Kirby. He's so Josh Kirby to me, yeah. He's Josh, he's so Josh. <laughs> Good. We rehearsed. They know my name. Um, happy Friday the 13th. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Have anybody done anything scary? Fucked a random? Nothing? All right, well, night's young. Um, I am usually drunk. I am a bartender. But don't worry, you're not going to get in one of those like angry bartender sets where they just like hate on you for being drunks and like don't tip. I actually like my job. I work two nights a week and I make enough to sleep in and do jack shit all week. And I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Um, if I were to give a note though, <laughs> know what the fuck you want to order. Guys <laughs> will make a beeline straight to my bar, walk right up to me, lean, point, eye contact, and I'll be like, what can I get you? And like, I'm good, I'm good. Where else does that make sense? Like, you don't see me open a door to H&R Block, walk through all the cubicles, lean in, and be like, can I do your taxes? No, I'm good, I'm good. So indecisive, but girls, you're much worse. I don't know what I want. Can you tell me what I want? First of all, I don't know your taste buds. I'm gonna have a warm shot of Crown to be able to deal with your voice. Um, I don't know what you want. Do you want one of those? It's gonna be $10. Um, also, I don't know what speed you are. Like, girls go out for a lot of different things. Like, it's girls night, or like, whatever the case is. So, I've just started asking girls, what's your speed? Like, are you looking to chill, or are you down to fuck? 
because I got a glass of Chardonnay and a Long Island, what's your speed? Um, that, uh, that question's actually gotten me into some trouble with the Latina community. Is, uh, any Latinas in the house? Okay, Mexicans, I can say it. Um, Mexican girls, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but um, maybe it's they're used to an effeminate Latino community, but um, it's not even the fact that I'm gay. I just have no poker face. So like when a Latina girl, when I'm like, do you want to fuck? She's like, oh, si, guapo. I'm like, does this not, no, it's a muscle tee. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Um, I just have a really bad poker face, and it's, they just wear ill-fitting clothing that accentuates their flaws. I think maybe something just got lost in translation. Skinny jeans don't make you skinny. <laughs> if you were skinny, you'd just call them jeans. <laughs> Ladies. If you think that's mean, I'll get to everybody, don't worry. <laughs> fat girls. There is a rising epidemic with fat girls, other than diabetes. Um, <laughs> Crying, date rape? Uh, big girls don't cry. Date rape. Come on, ladies. Like, please help me out. There have been so many big girls coming up to my bar wasted. Like, I only had one. I swear to God. I only had one. And then I woke up naked, and like he was like shoving me out the door. And I don't even know him. It's like, um, you're an easy target. They're going to date rape the hot girl. I'm sorry to say it, but like, you don't tranquilize the cow. You tranquilize the cheetah. Because they're hot. You heard the cow. That was too mean for y'all. Y'all got fat friends. They can help it, y'all assholes. Eat less. Move more. It's a simple trick. <laughs> y'all don't be so sensitive. It's fine. Black girls. Black girls? Any sisters in the house? Sisters? Okay. You are the Goldilocks of drink orderers. I love it. It can never be like just right. It's always too sweet or too strong. And I love that about you because I just make it easy on you and put the mixer and the liquor on the bar and just say, you make it because that's the only way you're going to be happy. <laughs> black guys, are we in? Any black guys in here? No? Nope. We are, all right. Wallet is safe. Um, <laughs> aw. Um, black guys order super rude and aloof. And I don't blame the black guys, I blame black girls. Because I love you because you are street smart. Black girls will accuse a black guy of ordering politely, and they'll accuse him of being gay. Off the bat. The guy will walk up, can I please have a vodka cranberry? And they're like, you hear that? He gay. And I'm like, no, he just orders politely. And he tips. Like, he's a good guy. Keep him. He is not gay. White girls, however, you guys, and maybe it's just Hollywood, but you will date a gay dude. It is so funny. <laughs> I have met more of my girlfriends here. They're like, oh, he's so cute. Isn't he cute? Yes, he is cute. He wears skinny jeans. Aren't those cute? Uh, would they fit you? Then you should wear them. Uh, didn't you like his tank top? Is it a wife beater? Because that means he's gay. I don't know, but you will never see a black girl dating a gay dude. And I respect that. That is street cred. And I love that about you. <laughs> White girls are freaking amazeballs. They are so sweet until they don't get what they want. And then they are mean as shit. <laughs> Do you guys have any drink specials? You don't? Because my 19 hot friends outside that are waiting in line, we'll just, we'll go somewhere else. Well, if they were hot, they wouldn't be waiting in line. And <laughs> the way that I know that is because gay guys are exactly the same way. Because we will walk out to a bar. Do you guys have any drink specials? No? Fine. I'm going to take 18 of my hot guy friends outside. And we're going to the next gay bar. It's happened. We also, white girls and gay guys, so parallel, and it's sad to say, we love elevation. I don't know what it is, but pay attention from now on out. They will stand on anything. Table, like couches, it's something, and the arm goes up. Now for the gays, it happens faster because it's called the gay arm. Have you guys ever noticed this? Anybody? Nobody? You've never seen the gay arm? You don't need faggot friends. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so basically, it's it, it, proven science. Uh, <laughs> any crowd, as Britney song comes on, it's like a dog and its tail. Just starts off down here, and then by the end of Britney, it is right up here. <laughs> I love it. Also, white girls and gay guys love free shit. Whether it's the cherries and the lemons and whatever, at the front of my bar, they look at it as a salad bar. And then, <laughs> Any reason to ask for a free drink, white girls do it. So gay guys, it's fine. It's like, I'm here early. Can I get a free drink? You've never heard of the early bird getting the free drink. The only person that's drinking here free is me. I'm actually getting paid to drink. 
Um, what else do I go? Oh, white girls love 80s night? I didn't realize that this is not, like, I just looked around. We had an 80s night the other night, and I looked around, and there are no black people at 80s night. And I was like, that is so sad. <laughs> and I realized it's like, must be a white thing to like remember the past fondly and like dance like idiots. That's fine. But, <laughs> but black people, it's because we don't honor, like the king of pop was in the 80s, but no 80s band can ever sing the king of pop. And I think that that's sad and horrible. Um, white guys? Has, has anybody heard this like white girl, dr white, white girl drunk? That's the new term? Have y'all heard this? Anybody? Nobody? Nobody? All right, well, you're gonna hear it soon. White girl drunk is the new thing. I think they should call it white guy drunk because they get apologetic. Have you seen the drunk apologizer? Anybody? No? Okay, well, this is what it looks like. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I am, I don't mean to get us drunk. And then they look at you like you're a freaking magician. I swear to God, this Saturday, I pull up, this guy kept leaving his card in the bill, kept leaving his card in the bill. And finally, I was like, sir, do you know where your card is? He was like, mm, I don't think I got it in my pocket. And I pull out his credit card that he left at the bar once again. I was like, sir, is this your card? And he's like, oh. I'm like, I'm not a fucking magician. I'm a bartender. Can you please help me out here? This is not the Magic Castle. This is V Lounge. <laughs> Love it. Um, I am drunk a good bit. Uh, I don't know if I sh I've, I've got wonderful friends. Let me just say that. And I thank the few of them that are here. Cheers for them. Here's for my friends. Yes. Friday the 13th. Love them. Um, I am scared of them, however, because I've been getting a lot of gifts recently, and they're all monogram flasks. <laughs> Like, what hint am I supposed to be getting at this point? Not that I'm a drunk, but I'm a cheap drunk. Like, that's so sad. Thank you. I'm not, I'll pay for my drinks. Also, I'm scared of them in large groups because I'm just, like, one or two friends I'll gladly hang out with, but when it gets to be, like, six or seven and we're out having fun, I'm always, like, weary. Like, I'm so scared that one of them's gonna turn around and be like, Josh, we're gonna have to sit you down. <laughs> Surprise intervention. Always happens to me. I know I don't work at a gay bar, by the way. I would rather work with real estrogen than fake estrogen any day. Um, but my favorite thing about gay bars is, have you guys ever noticed gay bar titles? It's like you know what you're walking into if you walk into a gay bar, all right? And it's like, Fiesta Cantina. Sounds like a gay party in your mouth, come on. <laughs> um, even the ones that are like kind of questionable, like Foo Bar, you're like, oh, what is it? But underneath it says Big Fat Dick Night, like there's no question, <laughs> you know? And then my, my straight white girlfriends all the time are just like, no, he told me that he just like wandered into a gay bar with his friends, but he's totally straight. Um, I tell people I'm sober all the time. Uh, flat out lie. Uh, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. I welcome your host back, Darren. He's Josh, Josh, Josh Kirby. He's so Josh Kirby to me. He's Josh, he's so Josh. Joshua Kirby, everybody! Wasn't he great? We having a good time? I, uh, he was actually talking about being drunk. I actually celebrated four years sober three days ago. Thank you, it's uh, awful. Okay, you guys ready for your next comedian? <laughs> it's terrible! Any questions? You guys ready for your next comedian? Yeah. Are ready for your next comedian? Come on. Yeah. All right. This next woman, can you believe it or not? Just 14 years ago, she did a show right on the stage and she said, please don't do the math. <laughs> Since then, you've seen her on such shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm? Huh? Yeah. Law and Order? Nah, and she can recently be seen on Desperate Housewives. What? Everyone, put your hands together for the very funny Robin McDonald. Rock and Robin, ting, ting, ting. Rock and Robin, ting, ting, ting. Go, Rock and Robin, because we're really gonna rock tonight. Hey, wow, what a great audience. Yay! Yeah. What a nice introduction from Darren. Band, LMNOP. Yeah, live music. 
That's good, because the dead musicians are really not that good. <laughs> you guys like my kicks? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! yeah, you know, I gotta stay fashion current when I'm up here working with these young, hot comics, you know? <laughs> gotta stay hip, gotta be cool. The only thing I don't have down is that fist bump thing. You know, it's like, you know, when they're like, hey, brother, you know? <laughs> so it's everywhere. And uh, when I see it coming, I get so nervous, I don't know what to do. You know, I start sweating. And uh, the other night we were all out, uh, a bunch of comics, we did a show, we were sitting at a table, and uh, afterwards an MC came off the stage and he was going around the table, you know, fist bumping all the guys, and I show them my brother, they were doing the thing. <laughs> and the, I saw it coming, you know, one by one, and then I'm next, and I'm panicked, and I just like cupped the fist. I copped the fist bump. Don't do that. <laughs> they don't like it. It's awkward. And, uh, you know. So now I got my own thing going. When I see one of the brothers coming, you know, giving me the fist bump, I give him one of these. I start bobbing and weaving and do a little <laughs> Irish jig. You know? Maybe they can know what it's like to feel off your game for a little bit. <laughs> right? Single people in the audience, give yourselves a big round of applause. I'm single. Uh, <laughs> one thing that I've recently discovered about being single, uh, apparently I'm not my type's type. <laughs> so. And, uh, you know, I'm not asking for much, right? I just want a guy who's in kind of good shape, has some education, Sexually active, you know, doesn't bitch about moving around a couple pieces of furniture. <laughs> but those guys already have boyfriends. <laughs> Tried the online dating thing, you guys do this? Oh, God. I finally uh, started to communicate with a guy I thought was pretty normal, and uh, we were this close to making a coffee date, and then he sent me a picture of himself doing the splits <laughs> on the hood of a Ferrari in dolphin shorts. So, you know, I'm just not into Ferraris, so. Uh. A while back, a friend of mine wanted to uh, set me up with a musician, right? I thought, oh, what's this gonna be like? You know, sexy front guy, you know, guitar licks, tight leather pants, nice package, you know? Hot, sweaty drummer, all tatted up, earring, kind of guy that throws you over the back of a couch. You know what she introduced me to? The trombone player. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's just this sick. There's nothing sexy about that. And come on, let's be honest. You know, if a garage band is gonna have cutbacks, you guys can back me up on this. Two guys are gonna go. The trombone player, and then maybe the guy on tambourine. Maybe. My girlfriend said, what do you mean? He works all the time. I said, what, funerals in New Orleans? Because I don't know, where else do you see these guys? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm back out there. You know, I'll tell you, it's uh, being a little bit older and being single, especially in this town, comes with some extra challenges. Uh, by extra, I mean uh, weight. You know, you get that Michelin tire that just sort of pops up overnight out of nowhere and you spend your time trying to cover it up and work it off, you know. Uh, I was at the gym the other day, and a woman actually asked me if I was pregnant, <laughs> right? I said, you know what? That is the nicest compliment. <laughs> For someone to think that that, <laughs> that ship is still in port, because that thing sailed about a decade ago. <laughs> hair, you know, you get older, you gain hair where you don't want it, you lose it where, frankly, you could use a little bit, you know? It's nothing like a guy going, hey, nice wax job. You're like, thanks. The whole time you know that shit just fell out. <laughs> so that was, that's easy. Sorry, I'm sorry, you look like such a nice couple. I gotta go there though, because I have to stay young and hip and cool and dark and. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, here's the thing. I think with men, you know, you guys can date as long as Clint Eastwood is alive, you can date actively into your hundreds. You know what I mean? <laughs> K-12 
case in point, my 87-year-old dad, uh, my mother passed away a few years ago, he has this huge dating life and a huge ego to go with it. And the bad part for me is that being single, I gotta fucking hear about it all the time, right? <laughs> I'll say it, I'm jealous of my dad. And he knows it, so we gotta rub it in, you know? Every chance he gets. You know, Friday night fish fry. Saturday night big band night. <laughs> Sunday night moonlight skinny dip. Okay, dad, that's it, that's where I cross the line. I mean, I am damaged enough. Do I really need to live with the image of my father doing a cannonball off, the, off a dock? <laughs> with his 87-year-old balls bouncing off the lake in the moonlight? That's, that's just wrong. That's too much to bear. On the other hand, you know, I, I, I'm happy that he can live life to the fullest at his age. It's sweet. Um, you know, you look around and there are a lot of people, you know, can't. Um, I have a neighbor, Betty. Uh, do you guys have that neighbor that uh, no matter what time of day or night, they're always out there trimming the hedges or waxing the car. And you're just trying to get out the house, into your car, and wherever you need to go. But if you happen to catch their eye, yeah, it's a 20-minute conversation that you can't get out of. You know these people? Well, this is my neighbor Betty, she's like this. She's you know, in her 90s, and she lives in a chair on her porch. <laughs> and you know, I think, it's, I think it's just like a set port, you know, a Hollywood set. There's no house behind it, it's just a porch. <laughs> And she just lives in it. And I think, you know, I estimate she hasn't been out of it maybe 40, 50 years. Yet every time you talk to her, she sounds like she's out of breath. So, you know, here I am trying to get to my car. I'm late. want to get out of there. Crouching down. I look up. Ah, Betty, call me. Ah. And I hear this. Hey, Robin. You got a sec? Uh, no, Betty, really, I gotta, you know, get, get going. Did I ever tell you about the cruise I took to the beautiful island of Madeira? <laughs> oh, gee, no, you, you didn't, Betty. Wait, oh, gosh. Oh, that's a beautiful island. It's just about two miles across, and oh. I think they've been invaded by everybody. The Moors, the Swedes, and oh, geez, that's a good, oh, my feet swelled up so bad on the plane going over. The first thing we had to find was a Fermathea. Firma. Yeah, that means, yeah, pharmacy, I got it, Betty, I got to get going, but when did you take that cruise? Oh, 19, uh, oh, 63, or maybe it was 65, I don't know, let's ask Frank. Frank! Frank! Sometimes I forget, he's not with us anymore. <laughs> you guys are so great. You got a great show coming up, Stu Smith, he's hilarious. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful night. Rock and Robin, Trinity, Rock and Robin, Tweet, Trinity. Oh, Rock and Robin, just really on a rock and tonight. Robin McDonald, everyone. Howdy, McDonald! Are you guys ready for your headliner? Yeah. Are you guys, are you guys ready for your headliner? Yeah. This guy, this guy is great. I've done a lot of shows with him. Uh, you guys are in for a treat. Let me just tell you a little something about him. You might have seen this guy. He's been a regular on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Come on, put your hands together for that. You may have seen him on a show called How I Met Your Mother. He does tons of commercials. He does stand-up all over the U.S. And uh, guess what? He's always wanted to be a Chippendale dancer. Let's hope 
He keeps his clothes on. Everyone, put your hands together for your headliner, Stu Smith! Who is Stu? Tell me who the fuck is Stu? Should I just sit down on the stool for the next 30 minutes and we'll just listen to these guys? Like, you guys are awesome. Big round of applause for Darren, Josh, Robin. These guys. Nice. I might just go sit down over here. There's a couple seats next to these ladies over here. Man, thank you guys for coming out tonight. I almost didn't make it on time, actually. I was, uh, I was over at Cantor's Deli eating uh, $80 worth of pastrami and corned beef all by myself. Because I had a Groupon that expired tonight and no one to go with me. <laughs> Any good Jew knows you do not let a coupon expire, okay? Yeah, that is a sure way of losing your membership privileges. Yeah. Any good Jews here tonight? It's a trick question. It's Friday night, it's Shabbat. No. The good Jews, the great Jews are at home or at synagogue right now. That's okay. I'm not, a, I'm not a good Jew either. No. Although I do like a bargain. I do. I love a bargain. I do. I started buying my uh, fruits and vegetables at the 99 cent store. Anyone else? Yeah. Really? Don't just appease me. Really. Oh, my God. Organic blueberries, 99 cents. Three-pound bag of carrots, like huge cucumbers organic baby romaine lettuce bag, 99 cents. Like, listen, Jew or not a Jew, like, these are tough economic times, okay? You do not pass up deals like that. <laughs> the only drawback, the lettuce does expire immediately upon opening the bag. <laughs> so you already have to have the rest of your salad chopped up in your mouth. You quickly open up the bag and squirt in your favorite soon-to-be expired 99 cent store dressing. And that is one deliciously healthy bargain of a meal. <laughs> Yummy, yum. <laughs> Friday the 13th, I know Josh mentioned it before. Anybody? No, we're not superstitious, right? No, me either, me either. I I'm pretty happy it's the 13th. I actually am just celebrating almost thir uh, 13 years of being out here in LA. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I uh, was born in uh, New York and actually raised the only uh, Jewish kid in a little redneck town in Florida. <laughs> yeah, my parents moved from Long Island, New York to the town of Poor White Trash, <laughs> also known as Hitlerville, <laughs> instead of LA or Miami where the rest of the Jews migrated, because that would have made life too easy for me. Yeah, nobody actually knew I was Jewish with a last name like Smith until about the third grade when my parents suggested that I start the Junior Wall Street Young Investors Club. <laughs> I mean, these kids were spending every penny of their allowance instead of dollar cost averaging 10% each month into a small cap growth mutual fund. I mean, really, who doesn't know that by third grade, right? I mean, what kind of a Jew would I be if I just stood idly by and let that happen? Not a good one, no. It's pretty much when the teasing started, though. It was a lot of, uh, bagels, bagels, two for five. That's what kept the Jews alive. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking what you guys are. Bagels, two for five dollars in the late 70s? No. <laughs> no Jews paying two fifty a bagel back then. That is clearly overpriced. <laughs> Stupid Gentiles. Come on. No. It's also when I became Stu the Jew. Yeah, or stew the Bufu Jew. You guys know what Bufu's short for? Butt fuck. Yeah. I'm not anti-anal or anything, but it is not the nickname you want when you're nine and new to town. I can tell you that. Yeah. Aww. Even Richard Seaman made fun of me. <laughs> True. True. And I'm like, guys, seriously, can we pick on him? Yeah, can we pick on little Dick Seaman? No? Okay. All right. I'll just be over here playing pocket dreidel. 
My parents uh, actually just came out to visit me from Florida. Uh, that's always fun, a couple retired senior citizen Jews visiting you from <laughs> South Florida. Uh, yay. You don't know him. <laughs> My dad, uh, Sheldon, or Shelley, uh, was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, Yeah, which means he's always spoken loud for no apparent reason. He randomly can't pronounce his R's, just constantly sounds angry. My mom is a saint, or whatever the Jewish equivalent would be. Uh, her name's Gloria, but for 51 years, my dad has called her Glor. He says, get over here, Glor, figure skating is starting. I know how much you like the Oriental kid. <laughs> like, Dad, you, you can't say Oriental anymore unless you're talking about a rug. Knock it off, Stuart. <laughs> I'm sorry, who's Stuart? Oh, me, Stuart, your son. Yeah, seems to me you'd want to name your kid something you can actually pronounce. <laughs> no. And, and growing up, my friends were always afraid to come over to our house because he just always sounded pissed. Like, I remember him at birthday parties, supposed to be fun. Let's get over here now, kids. Let's do this. It's time for Carvel ice cream cake. <laughs> Irwin, quit picking your boogers. Let's sing happy birthday to Stuart already. <laughs> Dad, you're yelling. I'm not yelling. This is the way I talk. This is who I am. Well, then you're deaf. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and bedtime, guys, was the absolute worst. Like, he should have never been anywhere near us during the bedtime routine, but he always wanted to be involved. We're going to read a bedtime story. Close your eyes. Relax. <laughs> There's this little girl, Goldilocks, and these three bears. She thought the porridge was too hot, the bed's too soft. Goldie, make up your goddamn mind already! <laughs> Sweet dreams, Stuart. <laughs> really, like, who can relax and fall asleep after someone screams a bedtime story at you? I wore pull-ups till I was 10. I pee a little bit when I hear loud noises. Yeah. Not, 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 not good. Oh, you shouldn't uh, eat a lot of salted meats before you get up on stage. <laughs> uh, did you guys have a uh, movie night when you were kids growing up? Anyone old enough for that? Like, we didn't have a lot of money, like I said. Um, I am, uh, I'm, uh, some people say cheap. I like to say cost conscious, <laughs> really. Uh, it's not my fault, it's hereditary. Like, it clearly got it from Shelly and Gloria. But uh, we had movie night growing up, and we only did it like once a month. So it was like this really big deal. It was supposed to be a lot of fun, but not with Shelly, no. He found a way to not make it fun. Stuart, get your brother and sister. We're going to see a double feature. We're going to see Benji, and then we're sneaking into Jaws. The schmucks at the mall don't check the ticket stubs. So pop your own popcorn and pour soda in your pockets. Let's go already. <laughs> and, and then if we didn't go fast enough, he would like kick us in the ass out the door with these like big two inch high heel white pleather dress shoes. <laughs> Benji and Jaws. That's what I saw one night when I was six. <laughs> yeah. He's always been cost conscious, my dad. Uh, yeah. When we were kids also, uh, McDonald's uh, would have cheeseburgers on sale for a quarter. And my dad would put on his three-piece suit, he'd hop on his moped with the milk crate basket bungee corded down on the back, and he would go down to McDonald's and he would buy like a hundred cheeseburgers, okay? And then bring them home and put them in the freezer for us to eat as after-school snacks for the next few months. Okay. Uh, here's the first thing, first thing that's wrong with that. Uh, once again, we're Jewish, okay, so mixing meat and dairy, not kosher, okay? <laughs> but my dad didn't care because he would rather save money instead of following God's silly dietary rules. <laughs> the other problem with that, McDonald's hamburgers don't keep, okay? <laughs> like, they're fine for a couple of days, 
But after three months in the freezer and paper, no Ziploc, no plastic wrap, they just like started turning this greenish brown color and they would just keep shrinking and shrinking <laughs> until they turned into like these little White Castle or Crystal Burgers. Th at the end, they were just like these like little tiny bite-sized freezer burnt meat-like sacks. <laughs> not healthy. No, not 99 cent store healthy, no. <laughs> For sure not. Mm -mm. Uh, did we say there's some couples here tonight? Yeah, couples? Yeah. Married, married couples? Yeah, nice. People just dating? Dating, dating, dating. Wait a second, sir, did you just clap twice? <laughs> you married in our dating? <laughs> like, I hope this is your girlfriend you're with, and, or, or your wife is just really cool. Good for you, man. Good for you. I, uh, I got married uh, nine years ago last week. Um, thank you for not applauding that, <laughs> because it didn't work out so well. Yeah, I'm actually celebrating three years of not being married next week. You can applaud that. Yeah, yeah I'm now Stu the Divorced Jew. That's my new nickname. Yeah, uh, if I could give some advice to maybe some of you who are dating or uh, possibly engaged or thinking about it soon. If you're standing at the altar across from your spouse-to-be or under the chuppah for some of my fellow Jews, and you think, I should not be doing this. <laughs> or I wonder if my high school girlfriend or boyfriend is single right now. That's a red flag, people, okay? It's a red flag. Because I had that feeling, and friends have asked me, like, well, was it just a fleeting thought? Why'd you go through with it? And I'm like, yes, it was a fleeting thought, because like $300,000 was spent on that one day. <laughs> And I didn't think anyone would get much of a refund if I walked at that point, seeing as the Dom Perignon fountains had already started flowing. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are also aware of this, but apparently society frowns upon men who do that. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a double standard when it comes to uh, leaving your uh, spouse to be at the chuppah. <laughs> like if a woman does it, if she walks at that point, it's okay, it's fine. Like she just needs a little more time. She's strong, good for her. If a guy does it, oh my God, he is like the biggest prick in the world. He better like change his identity, go into some witness protection program or something. Because I had that little doubt and I mentioned it to my dad and he was like, what do you mean you're having doubts? Do you know how much it cost me and your mother to have your names and today's date on 300 yarmulkes? And the boxes of Tic Tacs and the matches? I don't know, 540, knock it off already, Stuart. Get your ass out there and marry her. <laughs> so I did. And about six years later, and a whole lot of issues that we can't really discuss here tonight, uh, she says to me, I just don't think I'm the marrying type. <laughs> huh, really? <laughs> would have been nice if you would have mentioned that when we were standing under the chuppah. That's when we should have been talking about that. That's where I dropped the ball. That was my bad. It wasn't a complete loss, though. Mm. I have some wonderful ex-in-laws, a couple great ex-sister-in-laws. Ex-wife, not so bad, either. Um, but I did get a wonderful daughter out of it for all the pain and suffering I endured. Yeah. She's six. I think a few of you have uh, kids in here. Uh, everyone since my kid has been tiny, I will always come up to you and say, oh my God, little girls are princesses. They're so beautiful, such a princess. I'm here to tell you guys, not all of them. <laughs> no, apparently, <laughs> yeah. You don't know her. You don't want to clap for this one. I mean, I am raising a frat boy. Like, I'm pretty certain the one sperm that made it through to Creator was just loaded with all of my bodily function humor DNA. <laughs> Like, this kid, she loves burping and farting and spitting, leaving me floaters in the toilet. <laughs> like, I will walk into a toxic bathroom, this huge adult-sized floater in the bowl, and this cute little six-year-old girl just laughing and hiding behind the shower curtain. Yeah. The other day, she was talking to her mom. She told her to hold on, put the phone to her butt, and sharded. <laughs> She farted and shit herself. She did. Yeah. 
and, and then ran laughing to the bathroom trying to not poop the floor. And, and I didn't know if I should be like, like completely horrified or incredibly proud of her. The, the, the worst, she sure did, she did. It's a good image for you. The worst thing about this kid though, she loves punching me in the balls. Just random unexpected punches to the balls. Like she likes pretending my nuts are too many punching bags. Yeah. It's not good. That's not good. A lot of things to be proud of. That is not one of them as a parent. Uh, mm. Hey, Sharder over here that you like. <laughs> I'll get back to you in a minute. <laughs> the other thing uh, I guess is kind of cool about her is that she's already pretty independent for a six-year-old, except uh, there's a few things that she can't do by herself. Like, I can't let her go into the men's room by herself. And <laughs> can't let her go into the women's room. It's, I don't know if it's safe. And you know what? She, honestly, she doesn't wash her hands half the time. <laughs> uh, but the thing about the men's room, there's a couple problems that arise here. Number one, old men and some of you young guys, when you're standing at the urinal to pee, is it really necessary that you drop your pants all the way down to your <laughs> knees? It, because really, I don't think my daughter needs to see your saggy balls and your hairy ass as I'm trying to get her into the stall to go to the bathroom. I, honestly, I don't need to see it, really. I, I should actually let her go punch them in the balls. It's gross. The, the other problem with this She's already a really good reader, which is awesome, but can also cause some problems. Uh, any graffiti artists here tonight? <laughs> no? If you guys know one of them, will you please ask them to stop creating their art on the back of the stall doors in the men's rooms? Because I'm standing outside the stall, and my daughter says, Daddy, why did somebody write suck my and there's a picture of a penis on the back of the door, Dad? <laughs> Why would anyone want to suck a penis? <laughs> Wouldn't that taste like pee? <laughs> yes, sweetheart, it would. Yeah, it would. Or bleach. So don't, don't ever put a penis in your mouth, OK? Your mom never wanted to, so you shouldn't, all right? And daddy, there's a hole going into the other stall, and it says stick it here for a good time. What, can you see my tongue going through over to the other side? No, 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 sweetheart. Don't, don't stick your tongue into the hole. Oh, it smells like bleach, doesn't it? Yeah. Sorry, sir. She's six. She doesn't know any better. Oh, God. It is pretty bad. The other thing about her, um, I took her to... Well, let me ask you this. Hey, Sharder over here. What's your name? <laughs> Melanie. Melanie. Melanie, when was the last time you were spit on? <laughs> it, never, never, never would be the answer you would, you would hope to give someone if they asked you that question, okay, Melanie? Unless you're into some weird thing that we don't need to know about. Uh, never. Never. For me, it was three weeks ago. Yeah, I uh, treated my daughter to a very expensive and fun-filled day at Disneyland. And as we were in the car leaving, she started laughing and thought it would be funny to spit on me from the back seat. <laughs> yeah, just the back of my head and the side of my face with, like, overpriced Disneyland churro shrapnel. <laughs> Ugh. The next day, she fell off the monkey bars and broke her arm. The lesson here, karma can be a bitch, exactly. <laughs> Don't do that shit to your dad. So I was explaining karma to her at the hospital <laughs> as they were putting her cast on, and she spit on me again. Now, I think I would have been justified in breaking her other arm, and plus we were still at the hospital, so it would have been convenient, but I refrained. 
and now I'm just waiting for her beloved goldfish, Orangey, to die. <laughs> yeah, and if it doesn't in the next couple days, I will kill that thing myself just to prove a point. Don't mess with your dad. <laughs> Hear that, Melanie? Are you paying attention? Mm. The other thing, uh, raising a daughter, it's tough sometimes when there's not a woman around the house all the time. Because they're, in addition to the bathroom thing, there's some other things that happen. And uh, she's getting to know her body already. And I know this is natural, and we all do it and everything, but it would just be so much easier if I had a boy. Like if I had a son, and he was like tugging on his little junk, <laughs> I, I'd be like, yeah, it's my boy. Shoot the rocket to the moon. Start training it early, slugger. Because I think I may have passed on the masturbatory gene, too. <laughs> because my parents bought me a uh, waterbed for my 13th birthday for my bar mitzvah present. And I would just be locked in my bedroom, and all you'd hear is splash, 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 splash. <laughs> and my dad would be banging on the door. Do it! Knock it off in there already! Stop tugging on it! You're going to rip it off! Melanie, I would like to say that I have not ripped it off yet, okay? And I won't quit till I do because Shelly and Gloria Smith did not raise a quitta. Okay? I uh, took a couple years off from dating, somewhat voluntarily, and uh, got back into it uh, recently and uh, this may be hard for you to believe, but I've been accused of not being a manly man. I am in touch with my feminine side, though, so I can kind of understand it. I, uh, I do get my eyebrows threaded. I, um, I pee sitting down. I like soft toilet paper, too. I, uh, I actually had a woman break up with me once because I told her her toilet paper was too hard. Like she, like, she actually consulted with her mom and aunt and then got back to me and said, you're not manly enough for me. I have to stop going out with you. Like, I'm sorry. I don't like wiping my ass with 60-grit sandpaper, okay? Like, this stuff was clearly stolen from a gas station bathroom. <laughs> like, I like to not lose the top layer of my butt when I wipe after I poop, okay? The other thing, um, I cry a lot. I do. I'll admit it. I'm an emotional guy. Yeah, it's not manly sometimes. Sometimes not at the best times either. <laughs> I was, uh, I don't know if you guys watch these things, but I was watching one of those uh, Sports Center Make a Wish little stories. Those things are emotional, right? And I was tearing up a little bit, and my daughter came in and she said, Daddy, are you crying again? <laughs> I'm like, sweetheart, I've already told you this daddy has allergies. You don't have allergies, you're a big crybaby. It's a little embarrassing when your daughter calls you cry, baby, and she's not that far off. She's not. I also tend to obsess over my body, kind of like a woman sometimes, too. I said it, okay? I'll admit it. I was standing um, naked uh, in front of a full-length mirror uh, for a recent date. Uh, Melanie, if you want to just close your eyes and imagine that for a second. Okay. And uh, I'm looking at myself, and I'm like, oh, my God, I am hairy, and I'm pale, and uh, I'm fat and skinny. <laughs> like, I'm finny, basically. I'm finny. Finny, yeah. And then I'm thinking, oh, my God, is, like, my back hair at a reasonable length? Like, is it too long? Is it too stubbly? Because I know you ladies really want a pasty white malnourished grizzly bear climbing all over you in the bedroom, right? That is hot, Melanie. Those of you who uh, don't have kids, uh, I admire the fact that you can still curse freely and talk about sex freely. Those of us who have kids, at least I try not to do this. I know some of my friends still do. Uh, but I don't like talking about sex around her, and you have to come up with code words for things. So I came up with code words for sex, so I could talk to my friends, neighbors about it without her knowing. So I call sex a business meeting. 
All my friends and neighbors know what the code is. So I was taking her to school a couple weeks ago, and uh, my neighbor stops us on the way out, and he says, uh, hey, dude, um, did you have a, a business meeting a couple nights ago at your place? Taking work home with you, huh? Yeah, sounded like some pretty intense business meeting going on there. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, you may have heard some of the negotiations <laughs> happen here. It's not very easy uh, merging two companies that haven't had prior business dealings. <laughs> it was almost a hostile takeover. <laughs> but, but in the end, it was consensual, the, the merger. She's an Asian-owned business, and uh, we, we realized we're, we're a good fit, yeah. And he says, uh, but yeah, but um, I heard a glass break, and then I heard somebody scream about God, and I think I heard some crying. Like, was that you crying at the end of the business meeting? <laughs> yeah. So my daughter hears this, and I take her to school, and the first words out of her mouth when I bring her into her classroom, she tells her teacher, my daddy had a business meeting a couple of nights ago, and he was crying, and someone screamed about God. <laughs> She is so stupid still, thankfully. <laughs> she is, fortunately. I do have to be honest with you, too, um, trying to figure out how to date. I've used her in the past as an unsuspecting matchmaker. <laughs> yeah. Um, I picked her up from school once, and uh, she was talking to one of her classmates, Malia, and I know Malia's mom and dad are also divorced, and Malia's mom is hot, right? <laughs> so I said, uh, sweetheart, why don't you go ask Malia and her mommy if they would like to come over to our house for a play date Friday night <laughs> around 7 o'clock, maybe for Shabbat dinner, some Manischewitz wine, maybe even a sleepover? <laughs> like, wouldn't that be fun? But I'm not really friends with Malia. We should be friends with everyone, okay, who has a pretty <laughs> mommy and no daddy at home. But Malia pulls my hair. Well, that's not very nice. I might have to pull Malia's mommy's hair. Yeah, <laughs> show what it feels like. Yeah, you think Malia's mommy likes her hair pulled? Hey, wh why don't you go over there and ask her, sweetheart, see if she likes her hair pulled, okay? Because daddy needs a play date too because he's tired of playing with himself. That's not true. I'm not tired of playing. <laughs> None of us got, guys, no, nobody's tired of playing, no. <laughs> Shaking his head, no, never get tired of playing. I have been spending a lot of time teabagging big bowls of ice, though, so. <laughs> Melanie, if you want to just close your eyes again with me and picture me naked from the waist down, Melanie. Balls in a big bowl of ice. <laughs> no? <laughs> Oh my God. So, um, I, uh, so I'm dating again, and I uh, met this woman at a, a real business meeting, actually, recently. And uh, I was interested in her because she said to me that she was going through this phase where she was just going out with guys and having uninhibited, non-committed sex. And I was like, oh my God, like, wow, that sounds like a great phase. Like, I like that face. I'm interested in that. And uh, so we went out, and on the th by the third date, nothing's really happened. And I'm wondering, like, when does a sex phase start with this woman? And at the end of dinner, she says to me, uh, can I be honest with you? And ladies, we never want to hear that. No, because I'm a neurotic Jew, and immediately thoughts start going through my mind. Like, either she's married, or she used to be a man, or she's a hooker. I'd be okay with two of those. <laughs> But she says, uh, I really like you. I just don't think I want to do with you what I've been doing with every other guy lately, which is take them home on the first or second date and fuck the shit out of them. She says, uh, you're so sweet, you're special, she says. <laughs> so I spent the rest of the night trying to prove how unspecial I was <laughs> so she would treat me like one of the guys. There's no happy ending to that date, really. Um, we did have some junior high sex in her car, which was a lot of French kissing. And, uh, and then I went home and finished it myself, basically. <laughs> That's not fun. She did text me later that night saying that I'm a GR8 kisser. 
Yeah. So I couldn't wait to get home and call my mom the next morning and let her know she raised a great kisser. As if she didn't already know. Yeah. My college girlfriend told her. That's why she knows. That's why she knows. So, uh, date five with this woman <laughs> was a couple weeks ago. And uh, we had a nice dinner, got back to my place. She said her, tummy, her stomach, her tummy wasn't feeling well. So I gave her some Tums, being the gentleman I am. Disappeared in the bathroom for like 10 minutes. And then she came out and told me that she just diarrheaed my bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, she used diarrhea as a verb, people. Okay, I didn't know if I should send her home or ask her to marry me. And listen, these first few dates, very low ROI. Return on investment for those of you who didn't go to grade school with me. So I wasn't sending her home, and I think if she really wanted to go home, she would have said she had her period, right? And then she offered to give me a massage, so I'm like, okay, I'll take a massage. And so we go into my room, I'm down naked now, and I'm laid out, and she's sitting on my butt, and the whole time I'm trying to enjoy this massage, but all I hear is her stomach going. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, this woman is either going to shit all over my new thousand count Egyptian cotton sheets, or all over me. And that is a stain you cannot shout out, okay? <laughs> No spray and wash, no OxyClean. Like, that's a stain you need therapy for. <laughs> and I do have to give her credit. In her defense, she did say she wasn't really feeling sexy at the time, but she was naked, and that was sexy enough for me. So we did it, and I'll tell you guys, it was GR8. It was. It was, yeah. Yeah, she did, uh, she did immediately run to the bathroom afterwards. <laughs> So I guess you could say I literally fucked the shit out of her that night. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, so date six uh, was last Friday night. Just get you guys up to date here. Last Friday night, date six, this woman says the words that change a relationship, Melanie. You know what she said? Fuck me in the ass. <laughs> Date six is apparently the anal sex date for this woman, okay? And it, and it like totally caught me off guard because it rolled right off her tongue. It was like, uh, is that, is that, is that uh, candle chocolate? Fuck me in the ass. What? <laughs> oh my God, really? And I, I, I didn't know what to do because I'm a giver and I think most of us guys are and we want to make women happy. But the only thing I could think of was the date five diarrhea date. <laughs> And I'm neurotic, like I said, so I'm thinking like, oh my God, like, am I really special? Does she say this to all the guys? This is clearly not the first time she said this this week. <laughs> like, am I, am I drunk enough to do this? Am I too drunk? Is it even kosher? <laughs> and you guys, you guys have heard of whiskey dick, right? Well, I, I literally had whiny dick. Like, m my dick literally was, I don't want to go in there. No, it's too tight. Why can't we just go in the front door, or in the mouth? Uh, smart guy. So we didn't do it in the end. And um, we didn't. And then she broke up with me on Tuesday, uh, a few days ago. Yeah, she told me I was indecisive. Yeah when we were ordering the Thai food. Yes, I was indecisive. Spicy Thai food, IBS, and anal sex? No, not good combination for this woman. No, gross. I do have some friends who are actually uh, really sweet and nice, married and dating, who want to see me with somebody, so they're really nice and want to set me up with somebody. Mm. The only problem is they're going about it all wrong. Like, they're saying things like, oh, he's sweet, and he's nice, he's got a great personality, great heart, he's special. <laughs> I just wish they would get to the good stuff. I just wish they would say, he loves going downtown, okay? <laughs> he's a bit of a connoisseur. Yes, he is. Yes, he is truly a giver. <laughs> yes, he's going bald, but that's probably because previous women have rubbed the hair right off the top of his head with their inner thighs. <laughs> Yes. 
Now, if you're trying to find a woman for a guy, all you have to say is that she loves sports and giving blowjobs, all right? Actually, you know what? Forget the sports. Like, as long as she loves giving blowjobs, like, what guy wouldn't want to meet her, really? Like, she could clearly be into, I don't know, um, scrapbooking and collecting cat figurines. We'd still want to meet her. Right? I, I just want my friends to say, like, he is the best. Like, he will not stop until you're completely satisfied. Melanie, do you know what your legs feel like after running five miles? A little wobbly, a little shaky, like a newborn pony? That's what Stu can do for you. He will turn you into a newborn pony. Like, how cute is that? Like, who wouldn't want some of that, really? Nice. And I, I, I know, I can see a few of you are like all skeptical, and you're looking at me like, oh, really? You're like a newborn pony? Is he really a newborn pony good? I don't believe it. Can, can the guy who looks like my accountant really give me multiple <laughs> orgasms? I get it, but maybe you'll be driving home tonight, and you'll be thinking, hmm, maybe, maybe I will give him a chance. <laughs> maybe I will go out with him once or twice, maybe. Yeah, 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 I'll be the judge. We'll see if he's newborn pony good. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that. You give bald, hairy Jew my number. I'll shove his face right down there. I'll ride him like a pony. And on that note and that visual, I will tell you who have husbands and wives, boyfriends and girlfriends, you go home and enjoy yourselves. There's a big bowl of ice waiting for me backstage for my balls to be dipped in it. All right, thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jared, Acme, Tony, John. Oh, there he is, Robin. Hey, yeah. Hey, everyone, one more time. Stu Smith, let's hear it for him. Where is he? Joshua Kirby and your headliner, Stu Smith. Come on, let's hear it for him. We got Elemental P over there. What? No. Is there a chiropractor in the house? Stu Smith, everybody. Did you guys have a good time tonight? You guys were amazing. If you guys like the show, please email, tweet, put it on Facebook. We're here next fr every other Friday. We are Hollywood Stands Up. You guys are amazing. Thank you for coming out and supporting live comedy. One more time, Elemental P, 